I was reading the New York Times and there was this extraordinary piece in there about uh, what we can learn from the eight, 1918 flu pandemic and how it ended, given that we're now hitting the third year of our particular little experience with pandemics. Uh, it was written by John Barry. He's a distinguished scholar at Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. He's the author of numerous books and articles, including his, uh, his, his big book, the, the Great Influenza, the Story of the Deadliest Pandemic in History. Um, his, his works have appeared in Nature, Journal of Infectious Diseases, I mean, just all over the place. Uh, JohnMBarry.com is his, is his website. His Twitter handle is John M. Barry, uh, B-A-R-R-Y. And John, welcome to the program. Uh, tell me what, you know, the, the thing I found most amazing about your piece was that the, you know, we all thought that the flu pandemic resolved itself by eight, 1819, or at least I thought, you know, it was a two year pandemic. It wasn't. No, it, uh, you know, it, it, there was an incredibly intense period, almost like killing fields of about 14 to 15 weeks in the fall of 1918, where probably two thirds of the deaths over a two year period uh, were compressed into that very short time frame. But uh, it did last a couple of years. Uh, if you look at most of the histories, uh, including the CDC website, they say there were three waves. Um, but that's really because like today, when we're tired of COVID in 1920, people were tired of waves of influenza and they just ignored a fourth wave that in some cities was actually the deadliest wave. Um, you know, as today you had variants emerged and so forth. Uh, and, and, it continued to kill. Uh, the virus, like uh, SARS-CoV-2, had the ability to directly infect the lung, and, which made it potentially lethal. Uh, and it also had the, uh, the ability to infect cells in the upper respiratory tract, which made it uh, very transmissible. Uh, it lost, eventually, it lost the ability to infect cells in the lung and it turned into seasonal influenza. Uh, seasonal influenza viruses very rarely uh, directly infect the lung. This is, this is a fascinating point. I mean, the, 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 all these folks who are dying in the hospital on respirators are on respirators because their lungs have been infected by COVID and it's just you know turning their lungs into, uh, they, they talk about it looking like broken glass on an x-ray. Um, and I, I don't think that most, I mean, the, the, the nuance of this, I, the, the, the big difference with Omicron versus Delta and, and the previous right. strains of, of COVID is that Delta and the previous strains of COVID directly attacked lung tissue and Omicron is largely attacking the upper respiratory system, the, 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 you know, the, the throat, the, no, the nose, the, all this, and, right. and where you've got you know, far more robust tissue than you have in the lungs and you know, that, can, that can deal with an infection of this kind. I had no idea that the flu of 18, 1918 through 1920 was so deadly because just like the earlier versions of SARS COVID, it attacked lung tissue. I mean, that, that's absolutely amazing. What, that's gone, right? I mean, we no longer have flus that attack lung tissue. Um, what is that, can we extrapolate from that, you know, meaningful understandings of COVID or is this just, kind of well, too coincidental or, or corollaries? I mean, yes and no. Uh, first, you do have flus that attack the lung tissue. Those are the so-called bird flus. You remember the H5N1 scare 15 mm -hmm. years ago, and then more recently H7N9. Uh, but they did not, they were deadly, very deadly, because they only attack lung tissue. They could only bind to cells in the lung. They cannot bind to cells in the upper respiratory tract, which is why they are not transmissible between people. If those bird flus ever develop the ability to transmit between people by binding to the upper respiratory tract, then we would be looking at 1918 again. You know, so the question, the real question you just asked, uh, is 1918 a model? Right. Is there is there something in the evolutionary, uh, you know, process yeah. that, that that suggests that this is the case? I, I think there is, and it's it's what happens is the immune system, 
you know, takes a while to get going. And it is becomes once it's recognized the virus, uh, the T cells and everything else, uh, they are able to defend the lung. And since the virus can no longer get into the lung or not as easily, uh, that sort of pushes it into a direction uh, that it can infect, and that's the upper respiratory tract. You know, the, the problem is, and, and that does seem to be happening in COVID, like even Delta, which is certainly dangerous, but Delta had a tremendously increased viral load in the upper respiratory tract. There was no indication that it had a similar increased viral load in the lung. Uh, so Delta, in a sense, all, all started that trend. Omicron is descended from an entirely different line. It's not a spinoff of Delta. It's sort of moving in the same direction. The real problem is, you know, I think we will probably end up there uh, with an upper respiratory virus. But that doesn't mean that every step between now and where we end up moves in the right direction. It might very well, you know, tick into something that's more dangerous. That, that was really the point of the piece that not only in 1920, but in the 1957, 1968, and even the 2009 influenza pandemics, uh, in all of those pandemics, you had an uptick where it became more dangerous before those viruses turned into seasonal influenza. You know, whether or not we face that with uh, SARS-CoV-2 or not, you know, obviously we hope for the best. Uh, so I think we will end up with an upper respiratory Track virus. I think the immune system will push it in that direction. But when we get there and what we have to go through before we get there, uh, that, those are unanswerable questions. There's another wild card in the in the mix that was not in the mix in 1920, and that's vaccines. Uh, here, in, here in Oregon, you know, I get a daily email from the Department of Health about how we're doing in the state. And of course, I read the media about what's going nationally. And the New York Times uh, pushes out a, a, a good daily newsletter on this. And it seems that people who are not vaccinated are still ending up on respirators and dying in hospitals. Um, right. Th so apparently Omicron actually can bind to lung tissue. It just requires uh, a lack of vaccine to, uh, you know, a, yeah. a, a virgin immune system to be able to get that far. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, well, I mean, there are vaccinated people who are dying, but in a much, 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 much smaller number, right. you know, percentage-wise and everything than the unvaccinated. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. The <laughs> yes, I mean. So it's the process that that if you're not vaccinated, the 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 virus still attacks your upper respiratory system first, starts out as a sore throat kind of thing or sniffles. And but but then because you're not vaccinated, it just the viral load just goes so ballistic that it spreads around the body and eventually gets in the lungs. Is that is that the process? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and I are currently or I don't know if today's numbers or the you know, but we actually although Omicron is less virulent than Delta, the weekly deaths the average you know, seven day moving average is actually more deaths from Omicron than there were from Delta because so many more people have been infected. You know, on an individual basis, your chances are better with Omicron, but there are so many more people getting sick. Right. The, you know. Yeah, it's a matter of numbers. Um, so that would argue that if if one were strategizing how to message vaccination, that a really effective way to message vaccination might be protect your lungs, get the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you think? we've obviously had problems with uh, messaging. I, you know, <laughs> I, I would hope nothing seems to have worked. You know, you look at the numbers, 68 times more likely to die if you're unvaccinated. I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty pretty good number but maybe something like protect your lungs would work yeah. uh, nothing else seems to the unvaccinated at this point seem to be pretty locked in yeah that's a